Hey guys, got a couple of RPG horror stories for you today. The first one up is about a player who gets singled out by everyone, including the DM. Alright, so this is going to be half of a, wow, I can't believe they did this story, and half of a Ita kind of story, which does include the infamous, it's what my character would do line. But I promise what I do is comparatively small potatoes and meant nothing in the long run. So, this happened about a year back. I had been looking to join a new game, and a friend of mine had offered, after checking with his DM, to have me join. They were playing a homebrew that used some of the Grim Hollow rules. The big one being transformations. All of the players had at least two stages into transformations. I even got them to have me caught up in power scaling to the others. I was a DM pure bard with transformations that turned me into a full vampire. I had the pirate background, and was a morally ambiguous character. Not really evil, just held coin above morals. The party was looking for a boat to sail to a temple at sea that was being corrupted by an artifact from the Shadowfell that had been awakened. Their goal was to find it before some big bad did. They didn't have the coin to pay me and my men to get them there, but promised that I would get first pick of the loot, as we found it until it added up to the asking fee. So I called up my men, and we got the ship moving. We sail up, and a fog started encroaching as we got to the sandbar to the entrance. I got in a rowboat, and took them the rest of the way, and told my men to come back at sunup. We went into the temple, and find that it was now more of a tomb. And the moment we got inside, problems started to arise. We fought some undead that were popping up from inside some foul water that were just down the first set of stairs and I started getting dragged away. One of them yelled, Leave him! We just needed his boat to get here. I was able to get out of their grasp and got to a safer position for the fight. After the fight, we found a bit of treasure, but before I could inspect any of it, it got shoved into a portable hole. I brought up that the contract that we signed said that I would get first pick until we got to my fee. They said, Well, yeah, but you see, we were lying about that. We'll divide it up when we're out of here. I brought up the fact that they signed a legally binding contract, and they just shrugged and ignored me. We went through a few more traps and encounters, and soon we needed to take a short rest. I took this time to restate my fee, and that I was now willing to negotiate a further fee for helping them through the rest of this place, because the contract only said that I needed to get them here, not get them back or help them through it. They stated that there was nothing in the contract stating that they had to keep me safe either. Well, if that's the case, then perhaps I should just go back up and throw my boat back. You wouldn't make it to the entrance. So, now they have scanned me out of my pay, lied to me, left me to die, or at least fend for myself alone, and threatened me. After going through the dungeon a bit more, we're all hurt, and my character had become the butt-end of multiple jokes made by the characters, their players, and the DM. We decided to take a long rest. I don't require sleep, just light activity, and refuse to go to sleep. So why don't you want to rest? Well, in all honesty, you've lied to me, cheated me, and threatened my life. There's no way I'm taking my eyes off you. How do I know that you just won't kill me in my sleep? You don't. In that moment, I had decided that this character wouldn't get along with his party at all anymore. They had done everything in their power to stop him from wanting to join them at all. So, in the dead of night, I stealthed out of the camp. Polymorphed into a bat, and flew back to the surface, where I took the rowboat back to where the ship was anchored for the night, and sailed back to shore. The party later acquired the artifact that was corrupting the waters, and were able to fly down a different ship to get back to shore and found no trace of my character, or his ship or crew. Now, after all this happened, I had no ill will with the group as a whole. I had decided that the character wasn't going to fit with a group that was doing what they did to him. So I made a new character that was aligned with the goal of the campaign, not the goal of the party. I gave three different characters for the DM to look over, and he had denied each one of them. I decided that I would take a break to make a more accurate character for the lore, and the game slowly fell apart in favor of a new game that I didn't have interest in. So yeah, 
I didn't so much as betray the group as stay the course of my contract. They didn't pay me for services rendered, so I revoked the services. Probably wasn't the right character for that campaign if that was the kind of stuff they were aimed to pull on other party members. Alright, so unless you're leaving out some very specific information, then what the hell is wrong with these players, including the DM? The DM doesn't really implement you in a way that would necessarily build camaraderie, and is really more of how you would have an NPC be introduced to the party. Which, with that being said, the players kinda just treated you like an NPC. I don't know if the rest of the party was playing neutral, good, evil, lawful, chaotic, or what have you, but for a party that is supposed to be heroic, they acted anything but. I'm not quite sure how I would have necessarily handled the situation as a DM, but the fact they didn't honor their agreement, and the fact that you managed to escape, it could have been handled any number of ways. Alright, so they betrayed you. Well, now it's time for you to uh, keep them there at that place that they could only get to with a ship, and take the item that they spent so long trying to get, leave them there to be stranded and probably starve to death, go back to town and slander their reputation so that nobody really wants to work with them in the future, because if they're not willing to uphold a contractual agreement, then that means that they're not trustworthy. It could have been spun off into a rather disastrous punishment or a potential plot hook, albeit that doesn't necessarily save your character and you being a player in it, but it could have been worked into a thing. But then we also have the issue of the fact that you made a couple of their characters, three other characters, and they all got denied. Which means either you're the problem and you're not mixing well with that group, or that DM and the group are the problem. And it doesn't matter what you do, you're just never going to melt with them anyway, because whatever you're doing, they obviously have an issue with, and very well might not just want to play with you at all to begin with. And I think the fact that you're saying that that campaign fell apart anyway, I think that gives credence to my belief that there was something wrong with the DM or the group as a whole. But that's it for that story. On to the next one, which is about a pacifist barbarian. So I thought I'd post this story, as I thought it would be a fun story to tell. It's about the first time I ever DM'd. And the campaign that this story is about only ended up being three sessions because of the individual whom this is about. The group I played with was one that I had played with before, and the DM of that campaign we'll call John. He was now a player in this campaign, and it was my turn to DM. For campaign context, the campaign took place in a city that was as big as a continent. Said city was shrouded in an internal night by the Elder Goddess of the Night, as a way to help the city, as most of its population consisted of vampires. The city was inspired by old Victorian England and 17 to 1800s America. A lot of the campaign's elements were inspired by Hamilton. The campaign was about the queen of the city banning witchcraft. Not spellcasting, but witchcraft specifically. Which, to make a long story short, most of the population had mana in their souls that enabled spellcasting. Witches were people who casted magic through other means, due to them not being born with mana. The whole campaign would be about helping the witch population, figuring out why witchcraft was outlawed, and try to diplomatically solve the situation, all the while earning the chance to talk to the queen by doing quests and missions given by the city. The party consisted of a totem barbarian, a wild magic sorcerer, a cleric warlock dual class, a gunslinger, and a circle of dreams druid. They arrived in the city by a magical subway, and quickly met the witch who requested the adventurers to come to the city in the first place. They all happened to take the same job. One of the first things that they saw, as they walked into the city, was an old-fashioned gun duel happening in the streets. The classic, take ten steps and turn around and fire. The barbarian, who apparently was a pacifist, was fuming at the thought of this. The tiefling, who won the duel, explained that she was part of the Fighters Guild, the city police, 
and that the man she shot in the duel was a convict who elected to risk his life if it meant he could be free if he won it. I did make that scene in an attempt to start some form of conflict, but no way in hell was I prepared for what the barbarian was going to do. For you see, the duel had spectators. As it would, because it was in a public area. So the barbarian automatically assumed that everyone in the city was a violent maniac. The entire party seemed incredibly confused, but we rolled with it. Pacifist characters had been done well before in our group. My fire genasi bard I played in John's campaign we did previously was a pacifist, and that was handled well enough. The party decided to see if they could do some tasks around the city while they were busy remembering the layout of the city, since they would be here for a while. They went into a blacksmith store, and the barbarian immediately started causing a scene, accusing the blacksmith of helping the violence in the city by making weapons for these violent savages. I tried to let the blacksmith explain that she only ever made weapons for the fighters guild way back in the Great War, and now she just makes metal knickknacks and trinkets. This was not a satisfactory answer to the barbarian, as he got even more ticked off at the idea that this lady contributed to weapons of war. I had to end up making the blacksmith's daughter cry to quietly change topics. The rest of the session went well enough, but was really awkward afterwards. The barbarian had to leave early into the session, and afterwards, we all in the Discord had to talk about the barbarian's player, Tim. Before the next week's session, I had a talk with Tim about him needing to tone down his character. He could still be a pacifist, but just had to cool his jets around the hole. Everyone in this city is a violent maniac! Mentality. As that kind of mentality would make roleplaying impossible. Tim agreed to do so, and we went into the next session without any problems. But then, session three came. The party was asked by a hunter if they could assist him with hunting down a koi dragon, which is a creature I made for this campaign that was a koi fish dragon. I had planned for this fight to contain a type of test for the party, as they would come to find out that not only was the koi dragon an endangered species, but also that the one that they were hunting was guarding her eggs, which would probably be the last couple in existence. And koi dragons themselves were not a harm to people. Territorial, sure, but they wouldn't attack unless provoked. So, what would be most important for the party? Completing the mission, or saving the Koi Dragon? You would think that Tim's Barbarian would want to save the Koi Dragon, right? Well, apparently Mr. Pacifist didn't feel so pacifisty that day as he was basically demanding for the Koi Dragon's blood to be shed, yelling in the party's face that they needed to complete the mission. Our druid had to, in character, point out this sudden change in behavior. Tim, both in and out of character, started seething about how everyone in the party was being stupid and that they needed to tally up mission completions to talk to the queen and get this over with. Our sorcerer pointed out that there were many other missions on the mission board and that they could just let this one go, only for the party, both in and out of character, to start yelling at each other. I tried to defuse the situation, but it was hard for me to get a word in as everyone else was yelling. I had to server deafen Tim to get everyone else to calm down, which caused Tim to leave the call. It was getting late, so I told them that I would talk with them all tomorrow after I slept. Sadly though, when I checked the Discord the next morning, everyone had left the server. I asked them about it, and they said that the whole thing with Tim had soured them on the campaign, and they apologized to me saying that they did enjoy it, but they'd rather not continue with this version of the campaign. I said alright, and plan to start over in the future. But D&D will D&D, and we've never gotten around to it. Right, well, I can only guess as to what was going on in the Barbarian's head, but I myself have had a few players when I've DM'd who have tried to do a quote-unquote pacifist character. It's never worked well for me. It's abundantly clear though that this wasn't a pacifist character so much as a confrontational one. The thing that sucks the most though, rather obviously, is the fact that the rest of the players dipped out. But that's all I got for today. So, as always, have a good one.